All right, looks like we're out and live, so I'm going to uh, pop uh, pop a link over to Facebook. Be right back. Okay, we're back. I thought I would uh, share some of this because I may be a moron, but uh, I, I think this is uh, this is quite possibly the most hilariously awful game uh, with massive potential that I've ever played. Um, but let's just roll with the punches and see how we do. Hey, good to see you've got some people showing up. Tony, what's up, dude? How are you, man? You know, I really should be in Seattle playing Goss with Clay and Jeff right now. But instead, I'm, uh, I'm here in Austin. It's stinking hot, but um, nevertheless, my wife and kids are all taken off for uh, two weeks and I'm not going to see them. So I thought it'd be best better to uh, play here. Anyway, here we go. <coughs> um... Let's have a look at, and whoever else is here, just pop in and say hi. It'd be great to know who's watching. Uh, so this is Advanced Millennium Wars. Uh, here's the rule book. It's a skinny 20-page thing, really 12 pages of rules. And it's uh, unique in its uh, structure, format, rule writing, and pretty much everything else that goes into the game, uh, right down to the counter, counter art and the map art. And uh, it it has an amazing amount of potential, I think, but I'm very I'm very much struggling with the entire concept from uh, start to finish. And so, hey, what better what better thing to play live with you than watch that? You, let you watch me foobar this game. I thought that would be uh, kind of hilarious. So um, so let's see. Uh, the way this game is supposed to work, I think, is we have these charts over here. And uh, you can see the Israeli chart up the top there and the phalange, and then we've got Syria over to the right and the PLO on the, on the further right, just over there. I don't want to move around too much because I know that gets kind of jaggy uh, with, the, with the video and out of focus. So you have these... Uh, let's call them uh, faction cards. And you have this uh, C4I number of three, an initiative number of five, and then you've got these points here. These are political points that you keep track of, and you have an impulse you're supposed to keep track of. And each unit, or group of units, or whatever the case may be, your units have a rating, and depending on that rating, it's gonna determine how many times you're gonna get to act in each of the, num in each of the phases. And that's really gonna be driven by um, now, I believe it's by the uh, C4I number. So the Israelis get to do more shit than their compatriot Falange do. Then does the PLO and the Syrians get it? They've got a two up there. So, so with these impulses, the Israelis are going to uh, do some work in three, two, and one, and uh, probably may, uh, I think it just goes down to one. Uh, three, two, and one. Uh, the, the Syrians will get to activate in two and one, and everybody else will get to activate in one. And the initiative ratings uh, determines who goes first. So if there's multiple people in the next, uh, so for instance, in the next phase down here. And this is actually kind of good for me to talk this through because it's helping me understand what I think I know. Uh, the uh, next phase, we're going to determine who goes first by the initiative rating. And there's something kind of squirrely with that because the, the wording on the, in the rules talks about this, this initiative number here. This is an initiative number one, right? Which technically means that the Israelis would go last, which I could see that might be valuable. But then again, it gives the other player the opportunity to go first because Syrians have a two, right? And then these guys have a four. So they would go first. So, you know, I could see both ways how that would work. But in the rules... It refers to the formation card, but shows a picture of this number here, which is not this initiative number here, which is confusing. So there's the first, very, very first piece of confusion that you face in the game. And the whole idea here is that you can play, you're supposed to be able to play these scenarios that are either military operations, military scale, or political scale operations. So you can see this says mill scale here. And we're apparently doing the 1982 Operation uh, Peace for Galilee scenario. And uh, we have a buttload of uh, units on the board. And I have them all face, uh, uh, face down 
so that I can see what people can do. Um, and I'll explain what that mean, why, why I say that in a second. Uh, so, so there's that kind of construct going on here, right? So then here's your map. It's second, maybe third ugliest map you'll ever see. Big piece of ocean. There's no naval units in the game that I can figure or see. Don't need any of this stuff over here. That's nice. Uh, national borders are here. You have to know your geography. You need to know that uh, Haifa is uh, in Israel and that this is Lebanon and this Beirut. Beirut is actually you know labeled here, so you can know that that's Lebanon. And then you can work out Damascus because Damascus, uh, sorry, Syria because Damascus is here. This is my little list of clarifications. I'm going to try and get answers on on BGG. Oh, no, I can't do that because no one's answering questions on BGG for the game. Uh, so this game comes in Counterfact Magazine. It's supposed to be a subset of a set of scenarios that you can actually get in a five counter sheet game from someone somewhere that I've not yet found. It's not available on the One Small Step Games website. They have a bunch of sheets and charts and things that don't really relate at all to this game, but they're apparently part of it. They do have a new rule book, which is really good, because the new rule book, and we are gonna play, I'm gonna play the game in just a minute, so just, just, just freaking chill out. I'm not, I, I gotta get this all off my chest first so you know what we're dealing with here. So there's now a terrain chart in the, in the game, because before you just had the list of terrain and no icons to work out what was on the map, right? Um, no definitions of what free and obstructive mean. You've got to find that in the rules on the other page. Uh, so then, what, 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 what do all these counters mean? I mean, look, so this is a dude, right? That's a NATO symbol, pretty straight up, right? Uh, here's some engineers. They have an engineering marker. Let's look at some tanks. You know, here's a tank guy, right? So it's a tank, right? And we don't know exactly who it belongs. We know who it belongs to by the color, but we don't know what formation it is, but it's a brigade, right? And all the little icons, all these little icons here, they all have different meanings and, and they, they, you can do different things and that you can ex execute different missions, right? So then you flip over, you go, okay, well, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do a mission. Uh, it's in, I'm in the third impulse, so all the Israeli dudes can do something. So the first thing I wanted to do was you know, conduct an air raid here and attack the Syrian air force. I mean, just get them out of the game, right? So just knock that shit out, because that's what I would want to do. Well, you can do airstrikes, but you just can't do them against air on a base. Okay, okay, so fine. Um, we won't do that. Uh, so this, this, and, and here, and okay, so screw that, right? So we can't, the first casualty is media coverage. You, you put a media coverage counter on this, and then the second casualty you're supposed to, if it's a division, you lose a brigade, uh, and then uh, there's disruptions and other stuff that can happen. So we're not going to lose anything because we're not going to do that because we're not allowed to do that because apparently aircraft never, ever struck anything anywhere, ever. Um, so, so I'm going to go back to the drawing board as to what I'm going to do next. And what I'm going to do is all these missions are defined in the rules, and here they are. So I just got to find the icon, right? So, okay, so there's no icons there. Well, let me turn over the page. I'm going to look at the icons. Okay, so here we go. Assault. All right, so cool. So assault is a maneuver. What is that? They don't have the header at the top of the page. So they left a block for it, but they don't. Uh, so that's, it's icon type, casualty chain, and targets. Okay, so uh, airstrike. Uh, so I, I'm going to cross my fingers for a second. Just I, I think I might have found something that will let us do an airstrike on the ground. So maybe we can do that. So anyway, so we're down here with assault, and we're gonna have a look, assault, uh, so it's a maneuver thingy, and we, we're doing kinetic warfare, and we're, we're affecting ground units. And here's, a, here's the rules for assault. Okay, so it's so kind of a lot of stuff, right? So we're gonna skip that for a minute. Um, cohesion, that gives me, that's another thing that's on here, right? Uh, I can break down units. 
and maybe there's some breakdown things over there. Uh, and there's a bunch of other different things, but none of these, none of these missions are any of the missions that those tanks can conduct. So we don't have to worry about them right now. Uh, you can see here that I've got these air units out, right? Uh, they, they get, I put them out because they're doing interdiction and they're doing, that's a maneuver reactive thingy and uh, mission type and it's going to have a kinetic result. Anyone that comes within four hexes uh, uh, enters my zone of influence, which is four hexes, is going to have to stop. And it, does it get attacked? Let's see. Um, aircraft. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, the interdicting unit may conduct an airstrike against any ground unit that enters that. When we conduct a ground strike, it's going to be. Um, basically one factor. The way you fight in this game is you, you count up the number of units, and I think that guy's overstacked there. Uh, count up the number of units in a hex, and there's some bonus you might get, and then you just roll two dice, and that's the number of casualties you inflict. And then you look on the casualty table for the type of casualty that it might be, and you, um, you look here and you go, uh, well, where do you go? Hang on, I'll show you. So you go to this casualty table, and you can see with one unit, I've got to roll seven or better to get a, to get a hit. And the first casualty, uh, if I was doing air combat, it would be, um, well, let's say I was doing kinetic combat. The order of the casualty chain is body bags, breakdown, CNN, disrupt, and retreat. Um, if I'm in total war, we're doing CNN, devastate, and disrupt. Um, so here, uh, an Israeli division takes these sorts of losses if we were going through eight losses, right? Because that's in a kinetic, kinetic war. <clears throat> but, flip over this page, I just saw this other chart here, casualty table. Yeah, that's not going to affect anything. Okay, so, all right, so now, so you're saying, well, gee, what, what, what are we going to do? Patrick, uh, Greg, what it, Falange is some sort of, uh, they're a, uh, here's a, it's a, it's kind of like a militia unit of some sort that's uh, supportive of the Israeli cause in Lebanon. And they deploy into uh, local areas, um, commu into communities. Anything that is not, uh, how do I do that? I think I'm stuck here. Yeah, so I'm, I'm hang on a sec, there we go. Uh, so anything with a, 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 an outline is basically a community and we're gonna goof around there's communities and there's basically terrain and this is all rough terrain with red, red, red triangles. All right, so I'm, I'm allowed to do stuff with these guys. Now, if I was just moving these fellas, they have 16 movement points. Uh, and as we saw earlier on on that little chart, it, it's uh, it's two movement points per hex here. So I can move all these guys, and I'll, I'll check the stacking again. Actually, I've got a little list here. And I've read these rules twice. Uh, well, actually, three times. I read them a long time ago and made notes so long ago that I had to photocopy them. Stacking is two whole divisions, that's right, so I can put six units in a hex. So anyway, so we've got plenty of space here. So I'm gonna bring these, there's a division, do a division and a two brigades, so we're good. We're gonna go two, four. Now, I can't move into that hex, I don't believe. I can't move into where these aircraft are, so I can only move adjacent to them. But what I'm actually gonna do, I think, is move here. And I'll just go around. Uh, let's check. They, don't, they have a zone of influence of four, but they don't have the ability to react yet because it's not in their phase thingy. Um, you've got to kind of allocate the mission. So these, I'm using these counters because there's no, these little things for this um, interdiction mission here because there are no interdict counters, even though it says there are. Uh, so... Um, I guess that's an oversight there or something. But you put this here. I'm going to put this here. I'm going to go around two, four, six, eight, ten into there, right? 
Uh, no extra cost to move into a zone of influence or anything like that. And this way, next turn, when I do an assault move of some sort, I think that's what it's called, a maneuver uh, for assault, I can only move two movement points, so I can then move into here or to here and attack either one of those. Uh, and and that's what we'll that's what we'll do. So <clears throat> what I thought might be fun, just to see how this all kind of comes together, is to just focus on this little section of the map and and skip down to the second impulse and pretend like because the, these guys get to go again right and they're going to get to arguably they're going to get to go first based on the initiative rules i think and so they're going to attack this i believe this is a missile battery like a triple a missile battery and it would seem to me a little unusual that when if you know before if i could have done that air assault here that this guy could not have done some sort of reaction mission there, there are there is a reaction mission in here but it doesn't really tell you let's see if let's just double check make sure i'm not talking on my backside again um yeah there's kind of these global missions so uh there are administrative continuous easy Every man maneuver reactive uh, restricted and static missions, uh, which then breaks down into those all those other missions I was showing you earlier on. Um, a reactive mission is taken at any point in an impulse. Okay, so even during an opponent's turn to act, so you can do reactive missions. So if I had have been able to fly that stuff over there, and in fact over here perhaps, um, we we can do a reactive mission. So we'll do that too. Okay, so let's let's see how this works. Let's say that these fellas here are reacting to, let's put these guys back, uh, that these guys are reacting to this unit moving into here. And we're going to do a reactive mission that stops play, holding the player in mid-mission while the reactive mission is conducted. All right, fantastic. Uh, we're going to look at that reactive mission and see how we do that. I think it's going to be some sort of air-to-air -air combat thing, air strikes, no? AA, would that count? Reactive, probably that, huh? AA is fired by a unit with an AA icon, which I assume it's that guy. That's an AA icon. I don't know if you can see that or not. I can't make it focus for you. Come on, bro. Work with me, asshole. There you go. So AA, and then the other one is some sort of early warning thing. What's it called? EWAC, yeah, that's an EWAC thing. So we're going to put that back there. Press the focus button so we're not out of focus. Um, and we're going to do this reaction mission with AAA. And it's going to be an air combat mission in the casualty chain. Sounds exciting, doesn't it? Air combat. So the, uh, the casualty chain is abort and body bags. The listing of things. So I'm going to roll two dice. You just roll 2d6. And I have one unit. So I guess I that's one unit on the casualty table. I roll 2d6. And I roll a 6. Which is not going to be good enough. Because the, we needed a 7 to get a result. Let's say we roll a 7 though. Let's be generous. Let's say whatever. An 8. It would still be 1. And let's have a look at the casualty table. And see how this would work. Isn't this exciting to kind of... Jack by the game in the very early part. There we go. Multiple markers, body bags. What did I say we had to do? Abort and body bags. So here's what I guess is going to happen. Okay. Yeah, abort air units. Air units that come under fire may abort their mission. The affected air units cease conducting any missions in progress and are moved to a friendly base. Uh, if aborted unit suffers an additional casualty it, on its way back to its base, it may suffer an additional abort. Uh, the faction owning the aborted unit must reduce its political index by one or disrupt the air unit. Okay, so this guy took arguably took a hit. And uh, so we, we're going to, he has to go back to base. So we're popping back to base. Now what happens here is if I had have had another, um, another one of these AA units, he probably could have taken additional uh, hits or additional tracks, additional shots. I don't believe we get to shoot every hex. That would sound kind of hefty. Let's read what it says about uh, reaction here somewhere. 
let's continue reading the rule. I don't, if you guys are interested in this, I don't know, but uh, if you're not, I, I'll, I'll simply stop the video and play by myself. It's a lot easier to do this alone. Uh, may not be undertaken during an Reactive mission stops the play. Halting player in mid mission. Reactive conducted. Player resumes. A reactive mission may be reacted to. Well, that would just be a whole lot of fun, wouldn't it? A reactive mission is taken at any point in an impulse, but it doesn't. Oh, normally, the reaction is taken by an enemy unit entering the reacting unit's zone of influence. Well, could that be more uh, obtuse? Do I get to do that multiple times or just once? I think we're going to say it's once just for the hell of it. And we'll put it over here and uh, on the side there. And we'll call that guy aborted. And that would mean I drop this uh, political influence thing down by one. And so same for this guy. Let's roll two dice for that guy. And I roll a four. So we're good. He's just going to stay where he is and conduct his mission. So now I'm going to move these guys. And we'll do that. We're going to move to here. Three. I might wonder if that HQ can move. The HQ units, I'm sure they can. Is it, do they count as mechanized or do they count as something else? I really don't know. I'm gonna assume they're mechanized, so we'll put the HQ with them. And that sucker is gonna go there. I don't think that obviates the, uh, or breaks the stacking rules. We'll check that later, that's a note to make. And now let's have a look at what would happen if we were to do an assault here with this guy. Let's get a feel for how that works. What does a Q on the HQ mean? Let's see what the Qs are in the missions. So these, these mission rules are really densely written and poorly formatted. It's hard to kind of work out what the heck is going on. Uh, I don't see a Q. It must be a secret mission. Hell yeah, all right. So we're not using the Q, is what I'm guessing, we, but we're gonna do this combat. So let's do this combat. Now this time, because we, so now let's say it's the sec, it's, we're in the second phase, just for argument's sake. I'm now gonna do an assault, which is, okay, so this guy can't assault. Oh, he's going to watch. All right. Um, I've got two types of thing that I can do here. I can assault maneuver, and I get two movement points I'm allowed to use. Uh, it's an effort to dislodge an enemy or destroy him at close range, or I can do a single arrow, which is engage maneuver kinetic and ground units format. Engage is a shorthand for movement to engage. The engage mission is the standard method for a ground unit to attack a hostile unit. But an assault is more prepared by the sounds like it. More aggressive. Uh, when it works, the enemy casualties are higher. When it fails, assaulting units can be torn to pieces, smashing. Um, uh, let's see. If the unit is too far away... Uh, units conducting the assault mission maneuver to a point adjacent to the point of attack. The assaulting units then conduct an enhanced attack against the top enemy unit. Okay, so there's only one. Clears all units a hex. You must advance all assaulting units into that point. So it looks like we shouldn't have moved the HQ. If the assault fails, that's just a bad thing. Okay, so things die or get disrupted or engaged or whatever the case may be. So, okay, let's, let's, let's do this thing and see what happens. Assault. It's a kinetic attack. Is it total war? It says kinetic and ground units. Interesting. Okay, so it's just kinetic. So our result chain is going to be body bags. Here, I'll show you this assault chain. Can you see that there? It says kinetic, body bag, breakdown, scene, and disrupt and retreat. All right, so we're going to roll two dice. There's a bunch of units there we can use and we roll the six and we're going to do one well not the headquarters so there's three units in there i'm going to go to the three column and the three column says with the six that we, we inflict one loss and one loss with kinetic is well one result is body bags the effective unit is removed from play okay boom this this guy dies um 
consult the political point table, body bagging units usually carry a cost to the owning faction's political index. Okay, the political table is here somewhere. Uh, no, it's not. Okay, maybe it is. Down here, I saw it somewhere. Now, properties. Nope. Lots of tables. Casualty table. I'm in the wrong book. Here we go. Yeah, this was not included, I think, in the original rules, but it's in the redo. Here, yeah, here it is here. Yeah, they missed it. Let me just see if it's here before I go shooting my mouth up. Yeah, I know there is. It is in the rule book. My bad, I just missed it. Okay, so it says body bag. I go. To, so now I go to the political points table. Okay, and we're going to uh, find body bags. And let's see, body bags. <clears throat> body bags, body bags, body bags, body bags. Capture of objective, no. It says we're supposed to look at this. But I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing a result for body bags. So I'm gonna assume that, and maybe it's a loss of a unit. Any smaller unit, the actor has no effect, the target takes one point loss. So that was a Syrian force. So these guys lose one point as a smaller unit. That's what we're going to call that. That makes sense, right? So, I don't know about you guys. Yeah, and Lancer, that's a real good question. Uh, I think the way the icons work here is across the top. Yeah, uh, and, and well, I think if you look at look at it this way, let me just put the uh, comments down. If you look at it this way, going down in columns, that these are capabilities, these are uh, other acts, these are missions, these are things you can do to uh, affect the unit. And this is your zone of influence or your range. So I'm going to put this guy down. And now we're going to look at an air unit. Let me just grab that unit that, that whiffed his role, right? So he's got a range of four. He has two different types of mission. I can't find that icon. I don't, I don't know what it does. Um, I'll show you, I'll show you what, the, what this tells, tells you here. These rules over here for you to look at. So that's what it says here, right? Missions and properties. So you, I guess you can have up to five missions, although that break that that hierarchy icon is a breakdown. It allows you to break down and they count, they count that as a mission. Now, other missions that everybody can do are called everyman missions, and I'm, I'm not 100% sure how all of that necessarily works. So it's a little it's a little funky. It's a little different. It's an interesting combat results table we just saw, right? I mean, these guys got to advance into here, right? So, um, um, you know, I'm, a, I'm a, obviously a little bemused by it all, as you can probably tell. But the idea here is that this, the Israelis are supposed to devastate five communities because, um, you know, that's what the Israelis probably really wanted to do. Uh, devastate five communities in Lebanon, destroy all the PLO artillery units, and uh, have Israeli or Falange units occupy Beirut, and uh, and reset any Arab political factions, political index, whatever that means. So I just thought I'd check in with you guys for 20, 30 minutes, show you a little bit of this. Uh, it's It's challenging to grasp with I'm happy to answer questions so yeah no news blackout I guess that's correct uh, it doesn't seem like the sequence or row makes a difference there's all sorts of different icons and different things you know look at these these guys here have the little fortification bunker thing they can do uh, maneuver. That's a ambush icon. They can conduct. They have a range of one, and they're a foot unit. Uh, 
you know, whereas almond units don't say that they're almond units. It doesn't have a little, it, you just know it's almond because of the icon. Um, I can see that there's a cadence that's going to build up here with this game, with this game because of the political point losses and the the rapid frequency of I'm going to put this back here because I'm going to go back to the turn sequence. Um, so uh, the, as as you know, the Israelis get three actions with each one of these blue units a turn, and the Syrians only get two, uh, and then the the people plural PLO get one. Uh, that's going to start to wear down on the enemy. I'm taking a fairly militaristic approach with this. I was trying to, you know, knock out the air first, but I can't seem to find a way to do that. Although I think I saw a mission in here somewhere as I was skimming around that may allow us to do some sort of air combat, but I don't want to do a combat. I want to do an air strike against a field, and that doesn't seem to be possible. I can only do airstrikes against community and ground units. Uh, yeah, it could be that. It could be that, Lancer. Okay, uh, yeah, uh, it's called uh, Avenel Galil, blah, 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 person. Uh, it's called, uh, it's from the Counterfact magazine, which is from One Steps, One Small Step Games, and it's called Advanced Millennium Wars, or Millennium Wars Advanced Rules. I guess I got the name of that game wrong when I put the header up, but there it is there. Uh, it's a little magazine game, comes with one sheet of counters and 12 pages of rules, and it's supposed to be a subset of a larger game with five sheets of counters, which I would probably not participate in, I don't think. It, uh, the rules refer to you know many uh, different informational counters that are uh, here or to be used, which are not present or have different names. So it says CNN, but it says media coverage. Um, there's no interdiction markers to mark interdictions that are occurring. There's many, many opportunities to do interdictions. As you can see on the map, I've got three running right now. Um, so it's, it's curious and I'm really interested in it because it is very different, but it's very difficult to kind of come to grips with this kind of two stage mission profile where you choose an overall mission type and then you kind of look at your icons and go, okay, well, what can I do? And then let me look at what I can do and then look at what I can do in context of where my enemy is, what my objective is, how far away I am and what all my other guys can do and when they can do it, which makes for a somewhat uh, chaotic and confusing exercise to a certain extent. Uh, I see Lancer. Yeah, I've got the Air Wars uh, module here, and I pulled that out. I got that from a friend thinking, oh, man, that'll be really cool. I'll add this Air Wars stuff in. I'll get a little more granular and be awesome. And uh, it doesn't, I don't think it even maps. So I don't know what's going on. I'm probably, you know, we'll see what happens. All right, I'm, I'm probably going to let you guys go now, and I'm going to try and dig into this a little bit and see, uh, see what can happen next. Uh... Because yeah, everything's supposed to be over this way, right? Everything's supposed to be flipped over because your enemy's not supposed to know what's going on. Um, you know, he's red guys, red versus blue, right? Uh, but come on, right? I guess after a while, I would probably know that I had these five icons uh, on the back here, uh, knowing that one of them has, one is uh, just its zone of influence. But uh, this armored unit, well, yeah, it's got four icons on the back and I would probably get to know that. But there's rocket units here and AA units and artillery units and they all have different icons and all these are supposed to be flipped over this way. And I sure as hell ain't doing that. So while it looks a little more attractive with these things on the map, it kind of gives it that almost like a computer screen feel to it, computer game feel to it. It's a hideous map with hideous artwork. Uh, the icons are interesting, but they're hard. They're actually kind of hard to see. I mean, it's easy if I use the, uh, you know, we can zoom in here and check them out. You guys can see all that. It looks awesome, doesn't it? It looks awesome up close. Let's take some pictures. It's going to look fabulous. It's not going to play well. It doesn't play well with others. It's the Dead Sea. It's black. All right. Um, 
going to let you roll, guys. Thanks for checking in. I appreciate it. And uh, thumbs are always appreciated. If you're watching, give a little thumbs up. Go to the blog. Check the blog out. All that fun thing. I'm on Facebook, Twitter. You name it. I'm on your 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 on the Pony Express as well. Make it all happen for me. Anytime I can get uh, a thumbs up on the video is good, and uh, obviously likes on the all the different uh, social media. It's always nice. So I appreciate you guys tuning in, and thanks for hanging out with me as we uh, as we struggle through. If I play a full turn of this, I think it'll only be a full turn that I play. We'll get through it and see if we can't come to some conclusion about uh, what the what the veracity of the system is and whether or not it's actually uh, uh, somewhat functional.